Today on the Grandland Video Blog, Shrapnel, The Invincible Iron Man, The Punisher, Secret Invasion War of Kings, and X-Men Noir. Hey everyone, welcome to Grandland Video Blog for books that came out on January 9th, 2009. This is the first of two installments, as usual, on our YouTube and our Facebook pages. Uh, in this installment, we're going to talk about four Marvel books and one indie book. And then in the second installment, we're going to deal with five DC books that came out this week. First up, we're going to start with the Radical Comics. Shrapnel, number one, by Radical Comics. As you know, our store has been a big fan of Radical Comics uh, since its inception. Caliber and Hercules being their first two titles. They've gone on to put out good things such as City of Dust by Steve Niles, which we've talked about here on the video blog. Uh, Freedom Formula was kind of hit or miss. Didn't really uh, seem to strike a chord with anybody here. Now we are to Shrapnel, Aristia Rising, in a formula reminiscent of what they did for Caliber and for Hercules. Uh, Radical is presenting this comic for $1.99 and it is huge. It is really, really thick. I'm guessing 48 pages. It is, again, like most Radical uh, products, very, very well done on the art side. The story is very interesting. It's a five-issue miniseries, as all of their products are. So, you know, if you get in, you're not in for a long haul. You're just in for five issues. They seem to ship on time fairly well, so they don't have, you know, a lot of trouble hitting deadlines. And again, for $2 for a 48-page book, something that Marvel would charge you for or possibly $5 for, you can't go wrong with this book. This is a very nice uh, Starship Troopers, Blade Runner-esque, future sci-fi sort of thing with Space Marines. Uh, if that's your forte, and even if it's not your forte, it's a really, really well done book. I can't say enough good things, again, about Radical Comics. Uh, they seem to be approaching comic making very well with high quality, top-notch art, solid storytelling, and now they're getting some big name creators, as you'll see uh, in coming titles that are coming out from this company. Again, you know, I can't say enough good things about this company. Check this out, or if you happen to see uh, Caliber in hardcover, which some of your stores, uh, any good self-respected comic store, stocks all the time. So, check it out, and uh, you can't go wrong. Two dollars. On to the Marvel books. First up, The Invincible Iron Man, World's Most Wanted, Iron Man number nine. Part two of the year-long story arc, as promised by Matt Fraction. And I know we've given him a lot of crap lately on the video blog, but this is again a really good book. You, here we are taking a character like Tony Stark, like Iron Man, who after Civil War has spent a long time being the bad guy, the heavy, the, the old man who you know has the responsibility and nobody else wants to deal with the responsibility, so he's going to take the responsibility to do things. This is excellent. I'm really excited for this book. Um, by throwing him out of S.H.I.E.L.D., out of Stark Industries, throwing him out as a fugitive, you know, now being chased by Norman Osborn, he hammers uh, World's Most Wanted, literally, uh, Norman Osborn declares him the World's Most Wanted fugitive uh, because he implicates him in knowledge and inaction of the Skrull threat. You have Tony Stark made not only sympathetic, but very interesting. He's, his back is against the wall. That's what this character is about. That's what made Iron Man, the movie, so exciting, because his back was against the wall. He was kidnapped. You know, he was held hostage. He builds the Iron Man armor when his back's against the wall. He fights Obadiah Stane, you know, in a situation where he doesn't have any choice. When you take Iron Man, you put him in a situation like he's been for the past couple years, he's not a compelling character. Tony Stark is not a compelling character when he's very, very comfortable. It's seeing him uncomfortable, or seeing a man who is status quo comfortable, you know, a billionaire with, you know, Playboy bunnies on every side and a drink in his hand, uh, and throwing him into a warehouse where he has to uh, technologically lobotomize himself, per se, that's what makes him, it's what the true measure of Iron Man as a hero is. And we're beginning to see this, so Matt Fraction definitely deserves great kudos. Uh, Salvador La Roca, I, don't, I think he goes without saying, I've never seen a bad Salvador La Roca book. Everything looks amazing when Salvador La Roca does it. So if you're not reading this book, you know, you definitely should be. It's one of the best books to come out of Dark Reign so far. Not that we have a lot of Dark Reign books yet, but 
If you're looking for books that carry the Dark Rain banner, this is a really, really good, and it's heading in a really good direction. It looks to be really good for the foreseeable future. Speaking of Dark Rain books, Rick Remender gives us Punisher number one. This is the Norman Osborn variant, of course, otherwise you have the Sentry cover, which was the original cover solicited. It. As it says right on the front cover, Punisher's mission is to kill Norman Osborn, but first he must contend with the Sentry. This is very simple. Um, Punisher is trying to assassinate Norman Osborn, and the Sentry stops him. And if you ever wanted to see Punisher versus a Superman type character like the Sentry, this is your book. It doesn't sound like a very interesting premise to some people because, let's face it, Punisher, human being with a gun. Uh, Sentry is essentially Marvel Superman. When you put Sentry up against a human being with a gun, let alone a guy with, you know, combat sense and all of this, you know, like combat knowledge and Vietnam veteran or whatever uh, Frank Castle's story is, you know, you're going to get a little bit of fight out of him. But the way this is done is fascinating. And, and it really is a testament to Remender and his pacing and his writing ability to really launch this book in the correct direction. Now, I'm not sure exactly where it's going, where Punisher is going to end up at the end of this first story arc in terms of the mainstream Marvel Universe, but this first issue in general is a very good example of a great single issue. Very well done, single issue story. Even if you would never read number two, if you never know how, you know, what the ending is referring to in this book, this is a single issue. It's a Marvel classic. That's what it is. It's a modern classic. And, you know, kudos to Rick Remender for doing an amazing job at pacing and framing this story. Of course, it is $3.99. I just like to throw that out there. People hate me. Next up, Secret Invasion War of Kings one-shot. When we talked about Guardians of the Galaxy, I believe it was seven days ago, we talked about Guardians of the Galaxy having a War of Kings banner and not knowing what it was uh, going to apply to. As we saw, we saw Vulcan was involved, and we saw Black Bolt was involved, and people basically uh, suspected that Vulcan and Black Bolt were going to go to war, the Inhumans and the Shi'ar. That's possible what is, possibly what is going to happen, but this book throws an amazing curveball into the mix. Again, it's $4, but it is a one-shot, and it is maybe oversized. I'm looking at it, maybe. I don't know. It read, there was a lot of reading in here. It was very meaty. It was definitely worth the $4. It definitely links Secret Invasion to the War of Kings. I'm not quite sure uh, if Secret Invasion necessarily needed to be on this book per se, but it does, it does launch the War of Kings very, very well. It sets up the Inhumans and it sets up uh, the Kree, uh, King Blastar in the negative zone from the Guardians of the Galaxy issue last week, sets up the Shi'ar, sets up what's left of the Skrulls. It's a fascinating development and it does also uh, tie, of course, directly into the War of Kings saga, which any self-respecting comic store got for free, and is probably giving away, again, for free, to you. This is, if you've missed this, it's a free saga-style retelling of a lot of good things. A lot of the Annihilation stuff, Brubaker's Uncanny X-Men with the Shi'ar. Um, this is a really good read. This will definitely get you ready for War of Kings, and then definitely pick up Abnet and Landing on the Secret Invasion War of Kings one-shot because that's really what sold it for me is Abnett and Landing and they did, they did a great job. Lastly for this installment, X-Men Noir number two. Take everything good I said about X-Men Noir number one and double it because that's what number two is. This is still an amazing story. It continues to drive very well. Fred Van Lente and Dennis Calero are just incredible here. They're doing a great job they're continuing to throw new twists and new turns. Uh, there's a lot of stuff, again, this, you know, for being a 22 page book, it's a lot of reading material. This is well worth the $4 price tag. And again, if you're on the fence about it, if you're trade waiting, trade wait, but if you're, if you're on the fence, buy these individual issues because they're getting hard to find. And I'm sure that if you later want the trade, you can probably pick it up, you know, by selling the individual issues. They're gonna be hard to find for the first prints. It's going crazy. This one, again, the Calero variant, out of stock at Diamond. I couldn't order it yesterday, but you can get the regular one, which I don't have in stock here at the store. I had to reorder it. Again, this book is just flying off shelves everywhere I've seen, and um, it's just really, really good. Can't say enough about it. Definitely. Of all the books, check that one out. Probably Iron Man 2. I think those are probably the two best Marvel books this week. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in a little bit with some DC reviews.